All right, everyone. Today we are doing another Reddit reply, and it's been a while. So I thought we would do four instead of our typical three. <laughs> uh, give you one bonus one. So anyway, um, the very first one, these are all going to be from Marvel Champions today because uh, there's been some interesting uh, topics on there that I haven't been able to cover in a while. So I figured we might as well do them. Um, so anyway, the first one is a newbie question for some background. I just got the core box and Mutant Genesis. Uh, I got to play a couple of games and I'm wondering if protection is the worst aspect within the core set. My opinion, uh, leadership and justice are so much better in the core set experience. Do protection... Does, I guess does protection get better uh, with other heroes and expansions. And this is always one of the most fascinating things to me um, because that's exactly how I felt when I first played the game. I didn't understand why people would want to play protection. And because it was so bad out of the gate um, or so much worse than the other aspects, I guess is the better way to phrase it. Uh, it was definitely the weakest. And early on, for those that don't know, Nelson from Nelson All Over, uh, we would stream together, right? And we streamed over on his channel and he would always talk about um, how much of a fan he was of protection. And I never understood how you could be a fan because I automatically assumed it was bad because in the core box, it was, it was not great. And it's one of those things that over time, how it's changed that I think protection is one of the better aspects now, even for solo. It's so well balanced now um, and mainly because of healing. This is the big thing, and I and I believe I learned this from mainly Descry's gaming. Um, that he has talked about this in his videos that when he when you when you take on um, uh, expert villains, is that generally you want hero uh, hero healing abilities on your hero side. Wow, I butchered the way of saying that, um, but you want to be able to heal on your hero side, right? Generally speaking, a lot of aspects have it. Um, I think most of them do now, um, but protection seems like the easiest way of doing it as of right now at least and because flipping down an expert and playing solo as your reference this is all playing solo uh, it's really hard to flip down solo especially on expert so that was one of the things that he always talked about and that's what kind of pushed me in the direction of playing more protection because it's just the easiest way of playing some of the healing cards so anyway really kind of interesting that that how much of that has changed and it makes me wonder moving forward what's going to change right because all the aspects at this point are pretty decent um i guess you can kind of go down different archetypes of of each aspect and, and maybe that's what you do um but it'll be interesting to see where they take it from here because i think they're all pretty good maybe they make basic aspect truly a thing like the old basic cards are kind of weak but maybe maybe they make that happen i don't know all right. Anyway, so uh, community that what are some mistakes you made while first playing the game and correct it later when you found out? Let's help each other. And I thought their their two here is actually pretty decent. Uh, when a minion quick strikes, we didn't know it doesn't damage you of an alter ego only if you're a hero. I still have to look up that rule to this day. I have played I don't know maybe a thousand Marvel Champion games at this point, and I still have to look up that rule because every single time I go, wait, 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 can can you do it? <laughs> And then also, if a card requires you to discard until you find X card, for example, discard on the encounter deck until you find an attachment, if the encounter deck runs out and you don't find one, you do not have to reshuffle the entire encounter deck and find X card, but instead you stop the search. Um, I believe one of, I don't know if it's Arkham or Lord of the Rings that does this too. I want to say Lord of the Rings does, uh, but I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's the only reason I knew this rule. What I screwed up on early on, and this is really kind of embarrassing, uh, but I think I've talked about this in the past, is for the... A month maybe i played uh villains doing stage one two and three i did all of it like i i didn't read the part where expert says you substitute the cards out i just went oh my brain says i saw one two for standard naturally you go to three as well and it was so incredibly hard to to beat um that i didn't understand how anyone ever won a game and then when that changed i was like oh this game is much easier <laughs> it's actually still a scenario i like to um play now and again like or like like doing all three like i think it's sometimes fun like every now and again like once every other month or so i'll do it well i'll just pick a random villain and just do stage one two and three and see if i can do it and the thing is my play style has changed so much over the years that now i build out a lot more and because i build out i can actually handle the stage three villain not too not too uh bad because it's so easy to build on stage one so anyway it's one of those things i still do i don't know why but for me uh rules mistakes um I'm trying to think there, there's like little silly ones I would make all the time um, with like timing or my biggest thing. And I still do it to this day is with the infinity gauntlet right um, on Thanos. And I always get confused with the word um, when the villain activates against you. Right. And, you know, 
the wording always seems weird to me with it because I don't know if it's when they, they first like start their turn because they're activating or like after they activate. Right. And the wording is always kind of vague on a lot of those cards. Um, but what I've learned over time is you just pay attention to if it's an interrupt or a response, right? Interrupts are first responses or second. And that was an easier thing for me to understand. But for, for the longest time, I always had huge issues with the infinity gauntlet of when exactly, or, or I'm sorry, villains that use the infinity gauntlet and the infinity gauntlet, uh, when exactly like the cards get turned faced up, right? When activation is, I always thought that was a weird way of putting it in the way we are phrasing it. Um, I get why they do it, but it was just one of those things that always tripped me up. So what are some of the rules uh, for you? What, what what has tripped you up still trips you up to this day? Um, I'm always interested in things like that because I think that's a cool, uh, fun way to learn from, from a lot of different people. <laughs> this one is always funny. Who is you? <laughs> when they talk about, is it the player? Is it the hero? Uh, and it's so funny because you still gets like confusing, right? Because... It is basically you as the player, except for your allies, right? Everything on your table, except for your allies, uh, which makes sense. But it's still just like this weird thing that still trips us up, trips us up uh, to this day. And it's really funny that, you know, recently on um, uh, the, the what is it? The Mojo Mania scenario pack, one of the, the Deadpool card at the bottom has like a, a joke about it, right? Breaking the fourth wall. Uh, so that's pretty funny. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's one of those, those things that... I, it's like so incredibly complicated and I feel like I see questions on it all the time. And it's one of those things that every time it comes up, I have to think about it, right? So this kind of like is an extension of the previous one with like rules mistakes. You is hard. And you know, I know a lot of people jump on people and they're like, oh, you is you, like duh. Uh, but it's still one of those things like I struggle with of who is you <laughs> um, because I always think they're attacking me, but then an ally is stepping in the way. So it's still like an extension of me. I don't know. I, I, I get screwed up all the time. So I really feel for this person because I... I mess up all the time with it. So anyway, um, I think that's always a fun rule. Do you struggle with you? Do you, do you struggle with who is you or is it just, is it just me? <laughs> all right. So last one I want to talk about is, uh, how did you start? So, uh, you know, they talk about, it, I finally got this off the shelf of shame and I wish I had done it sooner, which by the way, I'm like that with so many games. There's so many games that are on my shelf of shame that I would leave there and then I would eventually play. I did this with, um, set a watch, right? I, I, I bought it. I just left it there on a shelf and I couldn't like get into it. And I decided like, no, no, I'm going to force myself to play it. And I like, I love that game. now. <laughs> it's one of my favorite games. Uh, so I do this all the time. Um, I don't know if anyone else does, but all right. So uh, just wondering how you all started playing. I've just played Spider-Man against Rhino with both starter decks, uh, beat Rhino in my fifth attempt, then got the hang of it and be expert first try. Solid. Uh, trying to figure out what to try next. Um, different, whatever, whatever, whatever. So, I know for me, I don't know if I've ever told the story of how I started, but my first LCG was actually Arkham Horror. I couldn't get into it at first because my mindset didn't understand LCGs. And then uh, Lord of the Rings was like deeply on sale like years and years ago. And so I just invested heavily in Lord of the Rings because I really like the IP. Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite, um, Middle Earth in general is one of my favorite IPs. Um, so I invested heavily into it and I forced myself to like it. And I remember uh, I would sit upstairs with my wife and her and I would kind of watch TV shows like, you know, comedies that we didn't really like pay attention to. She would work on her blog and I would sit there and force myself through Lord of the Rings and it slowly kept getting better and better and better once I understood the concept of LCGs um, and, and how they should work. Um, and that had me then revisit Arkham Horror, right? And I was like, oh, Arkham Horror is really different because I was in the initial impression that all LCGs are the same. It's just reskinned, basically. And I see this all the time on Reddit and different places. Uh, just like, just pick the one that whose IP interests you the most. And I've done a whole video on this of which you should pick. I, I guess I'll put it in the corner in case you never seen it. Um, but I, I think that's bad advice. I don't. I think it's slightly important the IP, but I think it's important to understand how different they are because they are truly different games. And it took me a while to get that. And then a buddy of mine on Instagram basically said, "Hey." You know, this Marvel game is actually pretty good. I said, hey, I don't really like the Marvel IP. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I like Spider-Man just fine. The X-Men are, are okay. Um, but like all the MCU stuff, I'm not really into. So well, I like this. And he's like, no, 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 it's more of a comic book feel. It's more old school. Like, give it a try. So I bought the core boxes. It was on sale. And then uh, I, I think the next month I bought everything I was behind on, which wasn't much because I was only behind it like a couple of months. Uh, so I bought everything I was behind on and became addicted to it. So uh, that's how I got started. And the, to the next part of their question, uh, they talk about what to try next. 
this is always a weird thing, right? Because I feel like we want to just buy the next thing and just keep going. And my my advice for a lot of these people is to make sure you try all aspects of the core box and deck building, right? You're probably not going to be good at, I wasn't, um, but to get in that mindset of how different cards pair up. Because one of the worst things I did, especially with Arkham Horror, I love, 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 love Arkham Horror. I think it's a great game. I got into it, whatever, a few years back, I guess. And um, I bought a lot of content all at once. So my grasp of player cards isn't very good, right? So when I deck build, there are certain cards that stand out because I've used them, but there's some I just skip over because I've never used them and I've never taken the time to like look at them and like read them and understand them that I skip over them. And then, you know, I'll make an Arkham video like I have recently. And in the comments, like, why are you not using like A, B or C cards? And you know, the people are very, very nice about it, very, very kind and very, very helpful. And I go, oh, like, I didn't really think of that because I, I got into Arkham so late and I, my card pool is too big. And I think this is the one thing that people make a mistake of in these LCGs is that they expand their card pool too fast and they don't understand how the card um, can work with other cards, right? You understand how the card works, but how does it work in the grand scheme of things? What makes it really good? Um, and now with Arkham, I have to like go back to basics, right? I have to like, I open up Arkham DB and I go through it and I make sure like, okay, like, let me read a bunch of the cards and see if I can understand it and read a bunch of the investigators and make sure I can understand it. And I feel like I've seen posts where people talk about this with Marvel, just like, is it overwhelming? And it is if you buy in all at once. And if you buy in all at once because of the sale, I get it. Just open slowly, right? Take your time through it. There's no rush. Um, take your time through it. But I, I feel like that's the first thing is truly explore the core box because there's a lot of good cards in that core box um, that you'll be using probably from here on out. And it's really important to understand how they work, why they work the way that you want them to work, and um, what makes them good, right? That's all important to understand. So what's, what's your advice to somebody just bought the core box they love it do you say hey hold off or start diving in or buy certain packs or just go in order whatever it is i still need to make a buyer's guide everyone else seems to do it I i'm going to at some point i don't know when um it's just it's on my list of things to do i have, I have a lot of videos to make but anyway um anyway so that's that's my reddit reply I appreciate you all, uh, you know, taking the time to listen to this. If you enjoy these videos, do me a huge favor. Make sure you scroll down, hit the like button, leave a comment in any of these topics. I always want to hear other people's opinions about it. And, um, you know, make sure to hit subscribe. It really helps the channel out, really helps me out. And, uh, yeah, I'll uh, hopefully be doing a Reddit reply again soon. I know it's been a little while, so maybe next week we'll have another one. So take care all. <laughs>